welcome to the Amigo Cartcast, the podcast where we roll through the ins and outs of material handling with Amigo Carts. I'm your host, Samantha Taylor, here with my co-host, Scott Chappell, and we're on a mission to find a better way for material handling. Thank you, Samantha. Each episode, we'll explore the innovative features, success stories, and the endless possibilities that Amigo Material Handling Carts bring to the table. Let's roll into a world of efficiency, innovation, and endless possibilities. This is the Amigo Cartcast. On this episode today, we're going to talk about how expensive it is or how expensive it can be to own a business, specifically in a warehouse manufacturing industrial setting. So I don't know a better person to speak to about that with all their experience than my co-host, Scott Chappell. Thank you, Samantha. You are so, it must be a Friday, but it must be a Friday because you're being super duper nice. So um, what I've seen when I go into facilities can be some pretty expensive equipment. And this equipment all has its it has its purpose. It has its benefits, but it can range from a forklift. It can range from a, a mezzanine. It can be rack and shelving, lots of tall, uh, long rack and shelving, and it can be a conveyor system. It could also be autonomous. There is in the oh world. Oh my gosh, of... I didn't even think of that. Mm-hmm. That is new. Talk You're about right. Top dollar, a hundred percent. And autonomy is out there, and it's it's the buzzword. When we were at Modex this last March. Oh my gosh, everybody had something like Half it. the show. Automated, which, mm-hmm. yeah, it was huge. I've never seen that before in the last seven years. So that's a good point. So the other side of the coin, though, Samantha, is how can we do things in a warehouse less expensive? We don't use the word cheaper because that's not what this is about. But this is how can we do things less expensive? And I think that's where our products come into play. I'm just going to put a quick plug in here, too, because we talk about we did see at Modex a lot of different autonomous uh, machinery, as well as all the more expensive equipment that you just named. The lead time on some of these, you have to have them in facilities. They're not going away, but sometimes the lead times can be up to almost a year long. And we'll speak a little bit of what our solution is with our product to get into the facility to kind of alleviate some of that. That's a good point. Back when COVID hit, there was a huge lead time on some of the larger equipment. And fortunately for us, we were our lead time increased a little bit, but not a lot. But um, you're 100% correct. And you know, the other thing about lead time, Samantha, is what does that do? For example, let's say you need some products to move things around in your facility, and it's going to take an extra 10 weeks to get it. What do you do in that 10 weeks? How do you keep people working? So that's a, that's a, I would have never thought that. I, I thought I knew it all, but obviously I don't. Keep you on your toes. Yes, you do. Mm-hmm. Yes, you so do. So rather than having our audience wait on pins and needles, they want to know all the answers to lead time or cost and cost. Gotcha. So lead time, um, first of all, if you don't know, uh, for anybody listening, we are a Michigan company, Great Lake State, been here since 1968. We are very, very, very proud of that. Um, so what does that mean to you on the other end? That means that our standard lead time is four weeks. Four weeks. It's not two-day Amazon delivery. It's four <laughs> weeks, which really is not too bad. Well, yeah, and absolutely, I, because we make all our products to order, so yes. semi-custom, if you will. We want to make sure that the right product's going out to the right customer. Not Amazon two-day quick, but four weeks for a custom-built mm-hmm. item. That's pretty darn and good. And in this, in this space that we're in, this industrial material handling space, I think anybody listening that's a dealer or anybody that is an end user that's bought something and had to wait, um, I think they would go, four weeks? That's pretty good. And the other side of it is the cost of investment, right? Um, What are the cost of our products? Now, we've had multiple podcasts. I don't think we've gone into specific pricing, but our products range from roughly $3,200 to just under $5,000. And the nice thing about that is in conjunction in your warehouse, you know your specific warehouse, you know what you're doing, but what we found is in some cases, we're able to minimize the expense to move things differently than what they're currently doing. Let me just go into that a little bit deeper. One is, for example, we've talked before about fork trucks and the fact that somebody might be using a fork truck to move a smaller box or a couple smaller boxes. In this case, you might be able to free up a fork truck to haul 
other things to improve efficiency on that end, whereas our products, our 30 by 50 decks, our 1,100 pound capacities will allow you to move the smaller stuff differently at less of a cost than your bigger equipment. So that's specific price cost. We also talked about like saving time. Yes. So price is important, but how also could we save time? So a um, couple of different ways we can do that. We have had customers send us pictures of the toolboxes they mount on our Dex Pro Plus. Mm -hmm. If you're not familiar with it, it's our largest deck product that we can mount these toolboxes on. Before they had our product, their maintenance staff was pushing these toolboxes throughout their facility. Only you know how big your place is. So if it's 20,000 or if it's 200,000 or if it's a million. So what is the time savings if you mount that heavy toolbox on our product and ride around your facility rather than pushing that? That's the more difficult side to show folks because if you've got two products next to each other and one is X amount and the other is less than that, you can say, oh, that's a savings. How do we show savings on this specific case here? And let's use a maintenance person for an example, right? If we can take and supply a product for a maintenance person that saves one hour a day, okay? We hear a lot of these maintenance folks are putting on 20,000, 30,000 steps. If we can save one hour a day, that's five days a week, that's five hours a week, and that's 20 hours in a month if it's a four-week four month, that really can be calculated to be about $1,000 savings for that company, for that one person, and that one product. We're telling our folks, Samantha, about a maintenance person saving potentially up to $1,000 in a month. When our products range from $3,000, $3,200 to just under five. dollars I mean, if we just do simple math, I'm a simple guy. It's a simple product. <laughs> we're a simple company in Millville Cornfield. That's right. But if we're going to do simple math, that can be a savings within six months, under six months. Yeah, absolutely. I am not the accountant at a company. I'm not the, the, the CPA at the company that talks about saving money. But I will tell you, I think probably an ROI or a savings or of a paid product in less than six months, I got to think that's going to be a win for their company. Yeah, no, I think that those are really great ways to show a ROI on our product. So thank you for sharing, Scott. Do you have maybe a real life example, someone that has told you how our product has been able to show that ROI in a facility? It's funny you ask that. It's amazing because it's almost like I have one. We were in Pennsylvania and it was the, the company, I won't say who it was, but it was a door company. They had an employee that was a warehouse supervisor that just came off knee replacement. In this specific case, they were interested in our Dex Pro Plus because it allowed them to move the gentleman and a load on the back end. Um, what was so memorable about it is that there's two mem memorable ideas. One was he had been with the company 20 plus years, so he was a keeper, right? He's not somebody that you're just going to go out and replace being the warehouse supervisor. So the fact of the matter is he had it. He had an injury, came back from knee replacement. Um, one is they wanted to get him back to work, right? So that was critical. Two is they wanted to keep him. Three is with this product that they purchased. Um, and the memorable thing was they wouldn't let us take it. We had to leave it there which messed up the rest of our week, but that's another story. But the other thing was they had calculated the amount of savings by having him back to work and by having him go through their whole facility on our product that they felt that they would pay this specific person back within three months would be the ROI because he's back to work, um, he's saving steps, and also the amount of money they invested would be returned that fast. And that's just what they gave us, right? They told us that information and that's what they did it for. That's so that incredible. was pretty memorable for us. Absolutely. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. It was just another way to, to improve efficiency in the facility. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing. We appreciate your stories. Um, and until next time. Keep it rolling. And that wraps up another episode of the Amigo Cartcast. We hope you enjoy this exploration into finding a better way for material handling with Amigo Cart. Be sure to subscribe as well as go to myamigo.com slash podcast to see pictures and videos mentioned in today's episode. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, keep rolling with Amigo.
Until next time. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling.